Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. God bless you for joining in tonight. Let's bow heads in prayer. Father, we just want to thank you for a beautiful day that we've had today. It's been a wonderful day. It's been an excellent, glorious display of your majesty. Bible says all heaven declares the glory of the living God. And we can see your glory, even as night utter wisdom. We can see your magnificence in the brightness of every day. And Lord, we want to thank you for that in Jesus' name. I want to thank you for your glory in our lives. We want to thank you for what you're doing in each and every life, particularly those of us who have known or rather have been known of you. Father, we want to thank you for your beautiful uh, hands upon our lives that you're doing wondrous things, you're doing gracious things. Father, we bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, Father God, we have come together tonight to learn at your feet and to hear your word. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will speak to our hearts, you will instruct our hearts in righteousness, you will feed us with divine words of wisdom that will fill our lives with practical evidence of your glory in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for as many people that will be tuning in tonight that are here, so we'll be hoping to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church, and Lord, will be the blessed of today's meeting. At the end of this meeting, Lord, let it be evident to us that we have met indeed with the Lord in the name of Jesus. May the aroma of heaven be well reflected and demonstrated in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. And may the very essence of this teaching, my wealthy place, be really seen in our lives that will come to our wealthy place in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We bless you. We put the devil under subjection tonight. We put all forces of evil under subjection tonight and we forbid them from manifesting in any capacity throughout the course of this meeting. Father, we thank you, we bless you. Give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Once again, I want to welcome every one of us for joining in tonight. God bless you greatly. We appreciate you for joining in for everyone. Uh, we know you could be somewhere else right now or you could be doing something else right now. We don't take this for granted and we appreciate you. God bless you. We trust that God will touch your hearts in the course of this teaching and we'll bring it to your wealthy place in the name of Jesus. Amen. We've been looking at this topic titled, My Wealthy Place. That is a topic that we're looking for this year, 2021, because God has proposed in his heart and his own mandate and plan is to take us to the wealthy place place. We want to see the you blessings of God displayed through our lives. And we want to see the glory of God manifested through our lives. The Bible says the hurt is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. There is nothing that we see here on earth that does not belong to God. And God did not create this for the children of the devil and his courts to enjoy, but he made all things for us to enjoy. Life should not be hard, particularly when we take on the mandate of the ministry that God has given to our, heart, to our hands and we are trying to fulfill it, we're going to need all the resources that we can get to be able to fulfill it. And that's why we need to position ourselves in a place where we can be the recipient of the blessings of God to be able to fulfill the vision of God. Remember, the essence for the blessing is for the, uh, for the provision. So the essence, uh, sorry, it's for the vision. The essence of provision is for the vision. The essence of the blessing is for us to be a blessing. And we can see throughout the pages of the scriptures that people that work with the Lord were intensely and definitely blessed. There was no gain saying about that. There was no way we could underscore the fact that they that work with the Lord in the scriptures were not in any capacity inferior in their own generation. So if there is an inferiority complex that entered into us, or perhaps we actually live in a life that is inferior, we should know that's not the best that God has to offer. And that's what we're trying to teach ourselves and bring ourselves up to speed as per what God wants to do in our lives and what God expects of us. And my prayer for you and I tonight in the name of Jesus is that we rise up to the place where we are able to receive of the Lord. Now, the problem is never with God. The problem is always with us receiving that grace from him. He's got all that he could give. And there's nothing left for God to do that he has not done. But the problem is on our side. We need to go up to the place where we can receive. We need to go up to the place where we can manifest his glory. We need to go up to the place where God can entrust us with his blessings. 
where you have little kids amongst us. I remember, uh, I mean, I have got little kids at home. I got three of them. And despite all the resources that are available to me right now, I can't hand it over to their hands, no matter how, how, uh, how much I love them. I can't get any one of my kids to start driving my car right now. No, not at all. The reason why they have not matured to that stage. We have to understand that sometimes in life, the reasons why we cannot receive the blessing has nothing to do with God. It just has all to do with us. And that's why we need to learn to get to the place where we develop spiritually, maturely, and we develop mentally, we develop physically, we develop emotionally, we develop psychologically, we develop in every aspect of life to be able to contain the blessing. You know, I, I was listening to a message uh, and um, the, the man of God was sharing how God blessed the man. And before you knew it, himself and the wife, they were separated. And before you knew it, the man started uh, taking a little bit of sip of, um, what do you call it now, those tequila or whatever they call it. And it's now beginning to rationalize it that it's not, you know, you know it begins, it began to walk in high class as it were. You see, that is a, that is a, the shameful part of it because the blessing is meant for us to dominate here on earth and to accomplish the vision of God for our lives. We're going to enjoy the blessing. I'm not saying we won't enjoy it, but when people have a slave mentality, when they have the blessing, they don't think of blessing other people. They want to think of how much can I have merged to myself? If you go through all the countries of Africa, what do you see? You see slavery mentality. What happens? The leadership when they get into power, they want to immerse as much wealth as they can and they can keep it. They are like the biblical man that uh, that has, you know, gotten a lot of wealth. And now we said, now that my hands have gotten me a lot of wealth, I'll build big barns and fill, keep my store. Then I'm going to retire. That's what he said, right? I'm going to basically now start saying to my soul, start enjoying yourself. And, you know, and that is a mentality a lot of people have now. If you see even Christians, you say if they make a million dollars or $2 million or $10 million, if you win the lottery, $50 million, what are you going to do? The first thing you're going to see here is that they're going to pay off their debt and then next they're going to retire. That's a recurring thing. That's a poor understanding of the wealth. If that is a goal that you have, you are being selfish and you're exactly like that man in the scriptures that the Bible was talking about there because that's exactly what he said. Now I'm going to stop working. I'm going to retire. That, is, that means you're thinking about yourself only. And the only person that matters is yourself. Remember the blessing of God upon Abraham said, I will bless you, I will multiply you, I will increase you, and I will make your name great. It says, indeed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Don't forget, he also told him, I will bless you and thou shall be a blessing. God wants to bring out these resources to our hands so that will be the water station we be like a river that is flowing, you know, and not a well that stays in one place and contains all its water. Okay, so that's only those who come in contact with him that can receive out of what he has. You know, that's why the blessing that the well offers is very limited. If you don't live within the jurisdiction or the, the proximity of that well, you can't actually benefit out of it. But look at rivers. Rivers go through 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 places, they through, go through cities, they go through, I mean, even sometimes countries where we came from. Look at River Niger. River Niger spans many countries. One of the one of the biggest rivers in Africa, uh, that's River Nile, um, that's that's going through almost several countries. You understand what happens? It's a blessing to all those countries that it passes through. And that's exactly what God wants to make us. He wants to bless us so that we contain the water. The water is a blessing, but we can come everywhere river. we go. That all people, vegetation, lands, nation, tribe, culture, people that we come in contact with, they are blessed as a result. Not as a world that contains its water in a particular place and only people of that household can benefit from it. And the people that the people of those households have decided to share it with. You know, don't be a well in terms of the blessing, be the river. You know, I, I want to be the river. If you're saying, now nah, I'm going to retire and I start enjoying myself, I'm going to go on vacation. You know, if you ask some Christians, if you win $50 million today in lottery, what are you going to do? Well, I'm just going to resign my work. I'm going to go on vacation for one year. That is meaning, that tells me you don't fully understand the essence of the blessing. The essence of the blessing is not meant only for you. You're going to enjoy part of it. There is that, definitely no doubt about it. 
but it's not only meant for you. Go and look at the richest people on earth, particularly those who are making meaning and differences with all with all with their wealth. They definitely live in affluence, but the 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 the, the lifestyle of affluence is not just all about them. They are reaching out to the world in a greater way than they can even ever benefit from their from their own finances. As I mentioned to you in our previous meetings, look at Jeff Bezos, gave over $10 billion away last year for climate change. And look at, look at Bill Gates, Bill and Melinda Gates, look at what they're doing in Africa and all over the world. They are building uh, a great, great resource. They are bringing great, great resources for those countries to combat malaria to combat HIV, to combat all kinds of tropical diseases. Why are they doing that? They are touching more lives than anybody else could. Uh, they could have said, okay, now is my time to just enjoy my money. That's not what they say, right? We should be thinking that we should have the right perspective and mentality around wealth, that the purpose of the wealth and the blessing is so that we can be a blessing unto others. You're going to enjoy it. Don't worry. You're going to enjoy it. God is not going to tell you don't enjoy the money. You know, it is when money is not even up to money or when the wealth is not up to wealth that you're thinking, maybe I can contain it to myself. You know, but again, you never despise the days of little beginning. When you still have the little, that is the when you should begin to leave the mentality or have the mentality of being a blessing and a river, right? That being a well that contains all its water. Hallelujah. So we are going to get to a bigger place this year. We're going to get to a wealthier place this year. We're going to get to a place where we contain the blessings of God massively. And we're going to mature to the place where we can receive all these things from the Lord. We're not going to be no longer babes. We are not going to be no longer little kids that don't understand what's going on around them. We are going to get into the full chair where we drive the whole thing and we begin to utilize the wealth that God has made available in this earth. The scripture I quoted at the beginning says that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. There is nothing that is contained here on earth that doesn't belong to God. But as I said, we need to mature to the place where we can receive it. We need to mature physically. We need to mature spiritually. We need to mature mentally. We need to mature psychologically and in every aspect of life to be able to continue. And part of these teachings or part of what we're going to be doing during this teaching is to help us to be able to understand all these things. First, we lay the foundation spiritually. We're also going to lay the foundation on the physical side as well. Because people think that blessings can just jump upon people. No, it doesn't. And that is the place where our faith is missing in the action. People hear all these precious words of the living God from the scriptures that says God wants to bless you, but they've forgotten it has to bless the work of their hands. So you need to go get something. You need to go get quality stuff. If all you have at home is oil, God can bless that and you can multiply the oil and you become a oil baroness. But if all you have at home is gold, that gold will multiply. And when that gold multiplies a lot, you know what you're going to become? You're going to become someone that has lots and lots of wealth. So we're going to talk about that as well as time goes on. But let's build the foundation right now, the spiritual part of it, the foundation that is very important. Because when you get the foundation right, you're going to understand what we're talking about. Amen. So wealthy place. We're going to go ahead and take our scriptures for this. We have been taking our scripture from Isaiah chapter 51, from verse 1 to 3 and verse 16. It says, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto Hebram your father, and unto Sarah that bear you, for I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion, it will comfort all our waste places. It will build, it will make a wilderness like Eden and a desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and a voice of melody. I have put my words in thy mouth and I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens. You see again God talking to us there that the reason for this blessings is so that the heavens can be planted here and there. Just like the prayer that we pray that will be done on earth, even as it is in heaven. If there is no hunger in heaven, it's our responsibility to make sure there is no hunger here on earth. If there is no people sleeping on the streets in heaven, it's our responsibility as believers to eradicate that in whatever society that we're in. If there is no iniquity abounding in heaven it's our responsibility to ensure that we'll fund the things that will go against iniquity for example politics we need to raise people up and fund them but if you don't have money how can you even raise somebody up 
You see, you can you can make you can make an overnight celebrity. Today's world is governed by media. You can make an overnight celebrity or same Anybody. way Donald Trump became a celebrity in the United States of America. It's the power of the media. Naturally, if they were to go by the content of his character, nobody would have voted for him. But because he's a media person, he was well packaged and he understands understood media and he still understands media and he used that to his advantage. And today, if we have the money, we can control media. But if you don't have money, you can't even stay near the media. So that's the essence of what God is. Is it that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and see unto Zion, thou art my people. So very key, important lesson from this. It says, if you're going to be blessed, look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah, who be you. He said, for I called him alone. That is God Almighty talking. I called him alone, and I blessed him, and I increased him. Amen. So we said the blessing, when we talk about the blessing, we can broadly look at it this way. There is the original blessing of the Lord upon mankind. And that blessing is what we see in Genesis chapter 1. We went through it already. We already read it. We already discussed it thoroughly. And we also talked about the blessings of Abraham, which is now the one that God is using to bless us. All right. That's the one that which God is using to deal with us. In Genesis chapter 1, we talked about the blessing of mankind. When God said, let us create man in our own image in verse 28, he says, and God blessed them. What was the blessing upon them? God said to them, be what? Fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it. Take control, absolute control over the earth. If we are not in an area where Christianity reigns, we are not subduing. We read, we heard in history about, I believe, uh, is it John Knox or so, in Scotland, when he, during his time, he got the old city for Christ. We very learned about uh, great men of God like John Alexander Dowie, who created Zion Hellenius in the United States. It's a city based on the foundations of the word of God and of holiness. Uh, we heard about the city of Philadelphia. You know, things that we are hearing today, even though they've lost all the touch with Christianity, but those people founded them in their own time had the vision of planting the heaven, and they did. If we all Christians stand up and take a rightful place, we will plant the heavens where we are. Our city should not be riddled with crime. Our city should not be riddled with unrighteousness. We shouldn't have lawmakers and, and uh, parliament members making rules that the devil demonically inspired and put in their hearts. They think they are doing the right thing. You know, unfortunately, they don't know they, they don't know the right from their life. They just think they are doing the right thing. They didn't know that they are being manipulated by the spirit of the devil. But when Christians do not stand in the place they ought to stand, the devil wants to take control and is going to use such people. So we need to take dominion, absolute dominion, authority, control over where we are. And we dictate uh, that what happens in the environment. That is the purpose of the blessing. If you don't have the resources, you can do that. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22 says the rule, uh, uh, the, no, it's not Proverbs 13, 27, uh, 22. That's a wrong scripture. Uh, but the scripture one of the quotes is that it says the rule, uh, the rich rule it over the poor. There is no doubt about that. That is why you must be blessed and God wants you to be blessed. Amen. So in Genesis chapter 2, we know what happened. My Bible talked about man being formed out of the dust. After God already created him, we talked about the difference between this and the other teachings. You understand creation is different from formation. We explained all that already. You know, the yada here, the, the, the formation here is not, is not the same thing as creation. This is now the man, the physical man being made. A spirit man was made in Genesis chapter 1, but the, and there were not only one person made. Male and female created them, lots of them. But in verse 2, in chapter 2, only one man was created, was made. So God made that physical body and it came from the dust, not the one God created in chapter one. This one came from the dust. That was the outer shell for the inner man. And so God breathed in him. That is the spirit of God that is part of the spirit of man came and joined. You know, let me say the spirit of that man that is part of the spirit of God came and joined into that body and that body became a living soul. And so that body was living. And we said one of the things that we saw as part of the blessings was that if this man was living in half floors, God created Eden. God created something that looked like heaven and planted it. That means it was not part of the earth. 
God brought it from somewhere. When you say something was planted, you know, if you say they planted a bomb in his car, what that means is that that bomb is not part of his car. So they planted a, 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 a camera in his office. That means that camera didn't come with, with his office. They deliberately went and brought it from somewhere and put it there. Or they planted somebody amongst the staff so they can listen to him. That means that staff doesn't actually belong to that office. They just went and brought somebody and, you know. So this is what happened. God planted luxury on earth. And he called the place that, of that he planted here on earth, he called it heathen. And we also understand in verse 11 of Genesis chapter 2, he talks about the... the uh, the, the whole land of Avila. The Avila is part of the Garden of Eden. You see, sometimes our, 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 our understanding of scripture is bastardized. When we talk about garden, people think it's like a small garden that you have at the back of your house. No, it's actually massive. It's a massive city of, of some sort that is even has beautiful different places. For example, there is a villa there where the whole land is covered with gold. Of course, that is not difficult to understand. Why? Because heaven's land is covered with gold. And that was where this man was walking. So this man, Adam, was walking in luxury. Affluence, complete affluence. His job now is to replicate that garden on the entirety of the world. That is his job. That's the only job God gave to him. Verse 15, and the Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to do what? To dress it and to keep it. And every green herb for meat and to a soul. So talk, God talked about the vision and the provision in that scripture. So God already made his provision ready for him. He doesn't think about provision. He's now to go work on the commission, not the provision. Go work on the vision. But what the fall did was to take away the provision so that we can't even fulfill the vision when we are struggling to meet up with the provision. And that is why we should never live in that because that is part of the fall. In Genesis chapter 2, we see the blessings had some for, uh, some uh, multiple fold. Number one is the fruitfulness and productivity part of it. That's the original blessing. It also commands increase of man so that whatever man does should increase. And then it commands absolute dominion, authority, control, and also command affluence and luxury. So uh, we said the purpose of the blessing is so that man can fulfill the vision and not be running after provision. Okay, and that's what we read in the scripture. Bible says that there's a blessing of the Lord that make it rich and has no sorrow. The, that, if you read that translation, you don't get it properly. Look at it now. It says it's the blessing of the Lord that brings wealth without painful toil for it. If you're, if you're painfully toiling for the provision, it is because you're walking in a curse. Don't get it wrongly. We all do. Mankind is working the curse right, right now. But we have to consciously take ourselves out of the curse. That is the default. The fact that you're born again doesn't take that out of your head. And that's why we're teaching ourselves this topic so that we can be able to learn how to walk out of that default. By default, all of us are walking the curse. That's why we have to work hard, you know, to make ends to meet. But that wasn't God's intention. So it's the blessing of the Lord that brings wealth without painful toil for it. Amen. And you see in Genesis chapter 3, when God pronounced the curse upon man, we talked about the consequences of curse. You know, there are four groups of curses God pronounced there. The first one was the curse on the serpent. Number two was the curse on the relationship between man and the serpent. Number three was the curse on the woman. And number four was the curse unto the man. You know, for the curse of the woman, it talked about painful childbirth and it talks about irresponsible husbands. And for the curse unto man, it talked about the ground is cursed for him so the ground was already blessed before the ground was just supposed to be using he's just supposed to look around what do i eat right now okay i'll catch that fresh stuff i'll catch this fresh stuff and just eat without thinking of what he's gonna eat he just decide what am i gonna eat right now and like two minutes instant noodles is ready he doesn't need to go fight for that you know so but unfortunately because of the curse of man the ground does not yield for man again you have to work the ground to make it to yield if you don't work it Rather than producing seeds, it produces weeds. That is why I explained a little bit about this. I said it's because of the default nature of the curse that is in operation upon the earth right now. That if you leave anything in this natural state, it is going to tend towards negativity. 
buy your cloth right now, white shirt, wash it in the washing machine, high on it and put it on your hanger. Don't worry for the next five years. Go look at it in five years. See if you're going to be able to uh, 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 put it on. No, it will be smelly. If it's not even grown mold or anything else, depending on the humidity of the house, at least it'll be dirty. You can't even put it on. How come a cloth you never wore that you wash before you put it there? You know, suddenly when it is growing, what happened? When you left it alone, what happens? And that is the state of anything you leave. Prepare good food right now, leave it on the table, come back in two weeks, it's be growing mold, right? So that is just a natural way without any action. So in order to be able to reverse the effect of that curse, you need to do action. That's why when you buy food, you need to keep it in the fridge. If you don't keep it in the fridge, it's going to spoil. That's why when you buy meat, the same thing, you keep it in the fridge, you buy fish, you put it in the fridge, otherwise it's going to get spoiled because of the action. Of so the if curse. you leave your life alone, you know what's going to come out of it? Weed. That's why you need to struggle, as it were, to bring yourself under subjection. Even walking uh, uh, morally, if you don't read scriptures for some time, before you know it, you'd become an unbeliever at heart. You're already backslidden. You have to keep doing something because the default on earth now is negativity. It goes towards the harder direction, not the course of blessing. In the past, under the dispensation of innocence, when man was first created, the power of the blessing was supposed to make him to walk in the blessing. Everything around him just produces naturally. They produce by themselves, by the commandments of God. Now you have to not, if you leave things alone, they go towards the curse. They gravitate towards the curse. Now you have to walk it back. Clear your garden right now. Clear everything completely. Leave it alone. In one month, come back. You will see grasses, weeds that you didn't plant. Negativity. Right? Raise kids. Make a mistake. Don't take them to church. Before you know it, they're on the streets. You know, prostituting themselves, getting involved in the alcohol, getting involved because that is the way naturally the hurt gravitates. The hurt is under the curse because of that. So the ground is cursed. Life naturally yields thorns and thistles. Is that not what the Bible says? Look at that. In verse 18, Genesis chapter 3 says, Thorns, thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth. Instead of bringing forth goodness. They're now bringing forward thorns and thistles. Negativity. Toil becomes the production factor. That is what that scripture says. It says in verse 19, In the sweat of thy face, thou shalt thou eat bread. The ground was supposed to be naturally yielding provision by itself. Man was not even supposed to be involved. That is, the blessing was supposed to be providing for man. That when you look around, whatever you need around you is just always there. But now it doesn't happen that way. You have to sweat to eat anything. You know, this toil becomes the production factor. If you don't put toil in, into it, it doesn't work. That's why you see people here on earth, they can rise to any top. It's at the expense of everything else. You see people that are at the top, they don't have a family, they are divorced. They are this, they are that. They don't have religion. They can't even go to church. You know, they can't do this, they can't do that. Why? Because of what? Because of the curse. Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the world for quite a long time, I think he's still the richest right now. The Tesla lost a lot of value uh, uh, over the past few days, so he's number two or so now. Jeff Bezos is the richest man on earth as we speak right now. And look at him. He's divorced. I'm not saying that to spite him or, her or anything else. I'm just saying that is what the curse naturally curse. That is the default. Because you need to put a lot of production toil into it. As you struggle and struggle and struggle. And every other area that you neglect is taken away from you. Whitney Houston, look at that. Started from the church. Good person with good voice. Went to the world. Before you know it, down the stream. Before you know it, the devil took over her life. And they will snatch the life out of her. That is why we need to be careful. We need to be really careful. When I say careful, I don't mean careful as in, as in scaring us. I'm just trying to say that we need to be conscious of who we are and whose we are and whom we serve. That's that's what exactly I'm saying here. Not that careful that we should be afraid and scared and, you know, no, 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 no. 
the wealth is for us. We're not saying wealth is bad, the wealth is for us. But we have to understand that the, thought, uh, the production factor of toy is not the, the, the thing that makes things work. It is a blessing of the law. If you put toilet into it, you can make it work. But the toilet is going to be at the expense of so many things. At so the expense of your health, expense of your family, expense of your spirituality, expense of everything else. Toilet must not become the production factor for us. Hallelujah. So if you look at, if you look at, uh, I, I read this translation to us last week. I think there's a message version of the curse of a man. He said, he told man, because you listen to your wife and hate the, from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from, don't eat from this tree. It says the very ground is cursed because of you. Getting food from the ground. Listen, say getting food from the ground will be as painful as having babies is for your wife. To make that ground to produce you with toil. You'll be walking in pain all your life long. So the ground will sprout what thorns and weeds instead of herbs good for seed for, for, for food. So you will get your food the hard way. And that's why we need to take a step back a little bit. Are we really getting our food the hard way? If that is what is happening, you know where we are working on under the curse. And we need to take action and reverse the curse. Part of that action is maturing in the things of God first. If you want it from God, you need to mature. God is not going to give it to you. You can get it any other way. You know, the earth always produces. If you put toil into it, it's going to produce. If you follow principles of wealthy and earth, you're going to make wealth. If, for example, let me give you an example. If you make up your mind, you're going to keep buying a house, a property every three, three years. And you start saving towards it. You know, it's possible. How much does it take? 5%. You don't need to go for something too big. Go for a 300,000, 400,000 house. That's all you need to go for. If you do that every three, three years, you can save $60,000. If you save, you know, uh, if you save 20,000 a year, 30,000 uh, uh, every whatever way, one, five year, every month, you know, you can arrive there, 60,000 at the end of three years, you buy another house, you can move into it. If you did that for the next five, uh, you know, uh, five houses, let's say that is, uh, if you do that every three years, five houses, 15 years. If you do that for the next 15 years, you will have five houses. If you have five houses, you're established, right? That is just man proposing. That is workable. That is workable for anybody. You don't need to be an angel to, for that to work. That is just natural. But you know the process you will go through. You will deny yourself of so many things. You know, you save 60000 in three years to buy a house of, uh, uh, I think I'm calculating wrongly. No, it's not 60000 If you're buying the 300000 let's even say 400000 house, uh, you're paying um, twenty thousand as deposit. Yeah, twenty thousand. So you have to save between twenty and thirty thousand every, uh, every three years. So that's ten thousand a year. You know, about a thousand a month. If you do that for the next three years, you save your thirty-six thousand. You can use it as a down payment for the next house. You can buy that every three years. You can you can change your house. That's all you just need to do, and you get five houses in five years, and you become rich because of that. But how does it come? Painful toil. To save those 10,000 every year and put it somewhere and deny yourself of so many things. Painful toil. You probably have to get a second job. You know, you, you know, you understand what I'm talking about. Painful toil. And then you're going to put it there. And then you struggle for the next 15 years. And in 15 years, don't forget there's still mortgages on those houses. Eventually, you get rid of the mortgages. You're blessed. You come out of it. And then you have the houses to yourself. That is working with through the system that is here. And that's how unbelievers are making it. If you listen to Kyo, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, if you listen to all those WFG people, World Financial Group, if you listen to all those, uh, all those uh, schemes, all kinds of schemes, those are systems that are set in place. You're on earth. People can enter into them and follow them and make it, but it's painful toil. It's a lot of toil. You know, but that's not the way God wants us to. You will focus on that. You won't fulfill any agenda of God for your life. That is just simple. And that's what the devil is interested in. That's why the systems that are put in place in the world is to take your soul and give you goods. Imagine you work for the next 15 years just to get your five houses. After that, you get your five houses. You still have to pay for them. So you keep working and working and working and working. The productive part of your life is gone. Gone. And you can't fulfill the vision of God doing that. Of course, you have goods at the end of the day, but that's not what God meant for you. 
goods are supposed to be chasing you, not you chasing after goods. Hallelujah. It says, until say planting and tilling and harvesting, sweating in the field from dawn to dusk. Say that's now your preoccupation. You'll be sweating it out. Hallelujah. But God's plan is not for us to be sweating it out. If you are sweating it out, you know, that's the power of the curse. Sweat will produce. God didn't say sweat won't produce. In fact, he said, them, he said to them, that is the way things without work from now is what? People think sweat is not, uh, it doesn't produce anything. That's not what we're talking about. But if you're producing, if your production factor is toil, and if it's sweat, you're doing the wrong thing. Because unfortunately, you are taking your attention away from the vision to provision. That's what happened. And then you cannot fulfill the vision and the mandate that he has for your life. So that's why we need to be careful and see and analyze and consider. Are we really working in the blessing or is this a painful toil? If it's a painful toil, you need to awaken yourself and say, I need the blessing, not the toil. Because the blessing is gone in for your soul. Why, uh, sorry, the, the toil is gone in for your soul. Fixing your, your attention on provision rather than getting your attention on God. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's quickly go ahead. Again, we see it says the blessing of the Lord that brings wealth without painful toil for it. It's only the blessing. You wouldn't have to. That doesn't mean you don't work. Don't get it wrong. People think when we say, when we talk about the blessing, we're meaning you don't walk. No, no, no. Bible says that does not work. It's not fit to eat. Yeah, have you often forgotten uh, Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3 when it talks about the blessed man? He said, and whatsoever he doeth shall do it shall prosper. That means the blessed man is supposed to work. But this time around, he's leveraging. He does something simple and he produces a lot. He hits jackpot with every business. Everything he does is guided by the Lord and he hits jackpot with it. What people struggle to attain in 20 years, he gets it in two years. That's what we're talking about. In fact, God can even compress the time so much that it's not even 20 years, it's not even two years. He gets it in two months. In fact, sometimes in two days. The generation that came out of the land of Egypt, you know what happened to them? The toil of 400 years was what they got out in one day. When God told them, go to the Egyptians, go and borrow all their gold. And they did it and they left town with it. All the, the Bible says they spoiled the Egyptians. All the wealth of Egypt was taken out in one day. Why? Because it was a blessing. God gave them favor. How would you like it? You started something, you thought it was very small, let me just do this niche. And before you know it, you went somewhere and somebody said, oh, I really love this product. Have you ever thought about selling it at, um, at uh, Walmart before? Say, ah, what do I know at Walmart? Say, really, I really like this product. Don't worry, I'm going to help you. Right in your presence, he takes the phone and calls somebody at Walmart. I say, I see this product. It's so, so nice. Can I ask him to come and see you at your office? And they give you an appointment that you went there. And they said, well, what we're going to do is we're going to do a test product. Can you provide us a million of this right away? That is what we're talking about. So it doesn't mean you don't work. You're still going to work. But the connections, the loose ends, God will just link you up here and there. And the toil does not bring that. You know, you can tell. I was listening to, you know, a YouTuber recently was talking about his biz, uh, business when she first started. I think there was an area of the printing. And when she worked hard, after a while, she started a mentorship group. And she started bringing people under her. And she would mentor them in that area where she was. And she said she became jealous of one particular person. What happened? The woman just started under her and she was talking to the woman. You know, she said, oh, don't worry, I will help you out. I will. And before you knew it, the woman started. Before you knew it, the, the product that the woman had was already in many stores. Before you knew it, she was making millions. She, had, she became jealous. That I have been in this thing for so many years. I'm even taking myself to be like a mentor for other people. But look at the success of this person just within a year. Overnight success. And she was ranting in that YouTube and saying that. Then she said she realized the power of networking, you know, and she called it that, you know. But God can do a major network for you where he didn't even ask for one, right? God can do that. He says, I will make your name great. You know, God can do that. You know, so don't forget about it. They can come even looking for you, not you looking for them. I've experienced that, you know. Today, I, I, I teach at the University of uh, Calgary Department of Family Medicine Residency. I teach them in the area of dermatology. I didn't go apply for the job. They came looking for me. 
They came looking for me. They sent me an email. Somebody brought the news to them. This guy does this. And then uh, he's a very good teacher. If you can just give, they asked me, well, how can we incorporate you? I gave them, just like they came to Joseph. You are the one that brought this revelation. How do we now ameliorate the situation? I gave them the curriculum. I developed the curriculum for them. I gave it to them. They said, how do you want us to do it? How many days do you want us to be taking this? I mean, I told them exactly what I wanted. How do we do this? How do we do And we implemented it. That is how God can connect you. And some other people are simply busy knocking. How can I break into that system? I cannot, you know, it is God that can make you. I mean, that's just even a little way. Uh, let me, don't let me use the word little because I'll be belittling what God has done. But what I'm trying to say is that God can even do so much more than that. So much more. So, so much more than that. That it will make you somebody of repute, not because you went struggling for it, but they come knocking. One of my friends in Saskatchewan talked about, he was sharing the testimony with myself and my wife. The university just gave, gave him the clinical assistant uh, professor position. He didn't apply for it because he took residence. So they, they, they just gave him, they didn't even submit an application for him. They gave him the clinical assistant professor position at the university. Plus on top of that, when they were trying to set up um, uh, the medical council all over Canada, uh, they needed representation from different provinces and their province somebody just recommended him he didn't go he didn't know he didn't doesn't know them and the whole medical council of canada called they sent a message and they said we have heard about you we would like you to join our committee for this and this and that and that imagine that is god making your name great not you running to make your name great that's what we're talking about it is the blessing of the lord that makes rich without painful toy for it. Hallelujah. Now let's go here. You see, the consequences of the fall, because man fell from that position, and after he fell, the consequences of the fall are real. That's why we are all unbelievers by default. We don't get saved until we take the action to be saved. That's why we are all hell bound if you don't confess the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That means by default, we are going to hell. So you have to take an action to get out of it. So the consequence of the fall is that the curse became the default. The toil being the production factor became the default. The fact that you're born again does not excuse you from it. Unless you begin to recognize that's a toil. That is not the blessing. And begin to take actions to come out of the toil. You actually don't get under the blessing. Come to church, let the pastor pray for you. Let them shout over your head. Let them put saliva on top of your forehead. He's not going to do anything. you got to take the step to come out of it. Prior to the fall, the blessing was default. After the fall, the curse became the default. That is, before the fall, Adam didn't have to think of what he ate. The ground was produced. God was his provision automatically. But after the fall, man had to fend for himself. He had to work, put the production factor of toil, sweat it out, basically. Man has to sweat it out. If he doesn't sweat it out, he doesn't get it. So we need to abandon that mentality. So if he doesn't sweat it out, he doesn't get it. So that's why God had to put another dispensation into place after the plan of uh, the fall of man. And each dispensation, we're going to talk about that a little bit shortly, but each dispensation is God's attempt to restore man back onto blessings. But man kept failing until we came to the dispensation of grace. But we're going to talk about that later. But let's try and understand what is this blessing exactly. We talked about the original blessing. So what does the blessing do for you? In Deuteronomy chapter 28, God gives us a glimpse of what the blessing is able to do. You know, I brought out the message translation here so that we're not reading the uh, cake uh, King James version and be saying doubt, you know, you might not understand that. But let's bring out the message translation and see exactly what God is saying. You know, God was saying that if you listen obediently to the voice of God, your God, he said, and hurt utterly, obey all his commandments that I command you today. God, your God, God, your God, we place you on high, high above all the nations of the world. So the blessing that is upon your life will make you the top of everything you do. 
whether it's in your field of profession, you'll be the top. Remember that same blessing was in the life of Joseph. Wherever he was, he was the top. At home, he was the chief supervisor. Everybody went to farm to go and farm. He went to farm to go and look at what they're doing. He was wearing a coat of many colors like a supervisor. He went to Potiphar's house. He was still the supervisor there. He went to the prison. What did he become? The Lord and the ruler over there. When he came to the palace, he became the Lord and the ruler. So whatever you do, you must become the top. If we are not attaining this, we need to strive. When I say strive, I mean contend, as the Bible says. The Bible says contend earnestly for the faith. We need to contend and battle with the devil so that we can stay in the place of the blessing. That wherever you go, you're just the head there. That is what the blessing does. Whether, whether it's in the area of your ministry, you're the head. Whether in the area of your community, even in day-to-day -day activities, they always look at you for leadership. Because God has placed you and I above all the nations of the, of the world. So now all these blessings will come down on you and spread out beyond you. So the blessings are supposed to overtake you, like King James said. You know, so it will come down on you and spread beyond you because you have responded to the voice of the Lord your God. What are these blessings? Number one, you will be blessed in the city. Whether, you know, some people, when they are in a particular country, they do well. When they go to the other country, they don't do well. But well, this is saying, whether you are in the city, just like Joseph, he was in the city, he was blessed, he was in Father's house, he was blessed, he was in prison, he was blessed. No matter, the blessing just kept manifesting. Blessing cannot be hid. It was just a light. It was just like a light. If you put the light under the bushes, it will still show for. If you put the light inside the houses, it will show. If you put the light anywhere, people will still see it. So that's exactly what the blessing would be. It says you will be blessed in the city. Your blessing will not be determined by location but determined by allocation from above. So God's blessing will be inside the city. It will be in the country. Whether they are in the country, you'll be blessed. There will be blessing upon your children. It is not enough that you're wealthy. It is not enough that you have, you know, you see a lot of rich people whose sons and daughters are wayward. They are spending great money on counseling. They are spending most great money on putting them in rehab institutions. That is not the blessing of the Lord. That one has added sorrow to it. That is toy that got you there. If you ever get that, that was toy. That was toy. Blessing of God will make even not just you prospering, even your children. You know, in Psalm 105, verse 14, it says, The Lord shall bless you, even you and your children. That's what it says. So the blessing is not only for you. We see that in the life of Abraham. He was blessed, his generation after him were blessed. So God will bless the crop of your land. If you are blessed, even the crops around you will be blessed. Your livestock, they will be blessed. You know, don't forget it was agriculture they had in those days. So that's why it was talking about the crops of the land. The livestock, those are different kinds of investment. Herds, flocks. In today's world, you can say your properties will be blessed. Right? Your stocks will be blessed. They will just be going higher and higher. If you have bitcoins, they will just be, your bitcoin price will just be going higher and higher. If you have uh, industries or businesses that you're running, they will just be going higher and higher. That's what he's saying here. When men are saying there's a casting that you just be mm, lifting up all the time. The God's blessing will be on your basket and bread and bread bowl. The, the King James says it should be upon your basket. Blessed shall be the basket and the, and the, uh, the storehouses. All right? So you have to understand this. Basket means something. Storehouses means something different. Basket is where you store. Uh, sorry, basket is where you are hitting from. The stores is where you store things. So whether it's in your account right now, it is going to be blessed. The money in your account will be blessed because that's where your daily income, daily spendings come from. It's not going to turn red. And your store will be full. That's what it means. Whether it's your emergency account, your savings, whatever it is, it will be full. That's what the Bible is talking about. So when we look at our store, there is nothing there. We look at our account. It's always looking at us with red eyes. You should know that's not the blessings of God. You know, I'm not saying there is not a day of little beginning. Don't get me wrong. You have just have to make sure that you're on the path. Don't forget Abraham also did not, Abraham did not also become wealthy overnight. God started increasing him. When he left the land of his, uh, his father's house and all that, it didn't go with much. But by the time we read about him later, we had so much. So there's a phase in life where you begin to gather where you begin to accumulate. I understand that. You know, so initially things may be red. And that's not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not neglecting that. 
We're not saying overnight this thing is going to happen overnight. That's not what we're talking about. But we have to be sure you're working the blessing. Otherwise, you can even be gathering together and things are looking green. But it's the toil that is producing. And when toil is producing, is the reverse of what, we, what we're saying will be happening. You may have prosperity in terms of money, but your children are cursed. They are working like vagabonds in the land. They are using the money they are getting from you to go and buy drugs and, and cocaine and all that. You know? And so that, that's not God's intention. See, God's blessing is in you, in your coming in and you're going out. There is no disaster about you. God will defeat your enemies who attack you. That's what he's saying here. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 7, he says, God will defeat even when people, when people rise as opposition to you, God will be your defender. He will neutralize them. Those who decide to be neutralized easily, they won't have to pay for it in that currency. But those who decide like Pharaoh, that say, well, unless I pursue you to the grave, then they have to enter the grave, right? Because God is now your defender. That's why you see people die in the midst of prosperity. The reason of because of it is when the enemies rose up against them because it was painful toil that produced it, there was no defense. But let the blessing produce it. Even when Abraham made the mistake of saying, well, let's not say it's a mistake. He didn't lie. People say he lied. He didn't lie. Rebecca was his, was a, was a, was a half-sister to her, to him, but wasn't telling the complete truth. You know, sometimes you read the scriptures, you don't understand the truth. The, Rebecca was from their king's place, king's men. And that's why when he sent out the servant to go and look wife for Isaac, he also told him to go and look for, because that's the way they do it. Even in the Middle East, they still do that till today. They marry from their king's people, king's men. They married cousins and nephews. That's how they marry in Middle East till date. So it wasn't lying by saying it's my sister. It wasn't just telling me the, 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 the king, the complete truth, that uh, it's my sister, but it's also my wife now. Yes, I was my sister. And Abimelech to the king, they took her and wanted to have her for wife because she was very beautiful, right? Even blessings produces beautiful, beautiful children and beautiful wives and beautiful spouses, husbands. That's what you're going to get with blessings. We read about the story of Job in Job chapter 42. This, there was none as fair as the daughters of Job in the old land. They were the most beautiful. Blessings. The enemies will be destroyed before you. Those who are peaceful enemies, God will make them to just be your friend. Because Bible says, if a man's way pleases the Lord, he will make even his enemies to be at peace with him. So they will just come to the place where they just like you. Those who refuse and want to be fired out, they'll just go and die. That's what's going to happen. Say, so God, we hold that blessing on your bands. You know, you look at that word, hold that. God will pronounce it from above. Just say, those bands be filled. Say, your workplaces. It will bless you in the land that your God is giving you. Can we say we are really blessed in this land? I don't think so. And that's why we need to begin to walk and begin to take account and begin to think about it. We need to begin to stand in the place of blessing. The God will form you as a people holy to himself. Just as he promised you. If you keep the commandments of your God, your God, and live the life he has shown you. You know, he's saying here that God will form you as an holy people unto himself. That this God will take choice and delight in you. And all the peoples on earth, on earth will see you living under the name of God and hold you in respectful awe. That dignity will just be upon you. When people see you, they just respect you. It's just the dignity that you carry. They just respect you. They don't despise you like they despise other people. People of color are despised anyhow. But you go somewhere, they don't do that to you. Even when they try to, when they don't know who you are, and they just begin to gravitate towards you. And You know, that can happen. Look at verse 11 to 14. It says, God will lavish you with good things. Don't you know blessings produce good things? Unfortunately, we have bastardized Christian mentality that associates good things with godliness. No, good things is not godliness. Good things are from God. Bible says all good and perfect gift comes from who? From above, from the Father of light. It's from God Almighty. So they associate good things. If a man has a beautiful car right now, buys a Lamborghini. I mean, if you've been following the news and following all the press and all that, you heard that Justin Bieber just bought his own Lamborghini. It was his dream edition. 
made from scratch, never existed before, you know. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a what do you call it? It's, you know, the design. If you see the, I just saw the picture somewhere. It was really, really heart of this world. You know, people don't talk. You never find a Christian wag their tongue about that. But let a man of God buy that. Wow. Have you heard Crefugola bought a Lamborghini? That's what you're going to hear. Did you hear Kenneth Copeland bought a Lamborghini? Did you hear Pastor Adeboe bought a Lamborghini? That's what you hear. Bastardized Christian mentality. The devil gave us Kool-Aid and we're drinking it. But isn't what the Bible says here, that God will lavish you. What's the meaning of lavish? You don't know the meaning of lavish? Not God will give you. There's a difference between God giving and God lavishing. If you've been to parties in Africa, you know what lavish is, especially in Nigeria. When they lavish somebody with money, the money will be flowing all over the person on the ground that they will have to use basket to help the person be packing the money. And the young zone didn't just put hands in the pocket and take out some notes and give it to the person. No, they spray the person with money. That is lavishing. That's what the Bible says. Here. God will lavish you with good things. God is not interested in little blessings, trickle, trickle of blessings. He wants to lavish you. The children from your womb, offspring from your animals, and crops from your land, the land that God has promised your ancestors that we give you. We come into this place, God can lavish us with all the good things in the land. You begin to drive the good cars, you own properties, you own schools, you own, you know. That is what we're talking about. Not all this, I also bought the house. Oh, praise God. That is not God lavishing you. Unbelievers buy houses too. And the house you bought is, is less than 500,000. That is not what we're talking about. That's not, that's just a start. That's just uh, the toil. Uh, let's put it the way it is. So God will throw open the doors of the skies, vaults, and pour rain upon your land on schedule. You know the reason why there is climate crisis? It is because of the sin of, it's because of iniquities. And nothing can fix that. If you, if righteousness upon the land, it will bring what? Rain in a season. It says it's going to bring rain on your land on schedule. Climate crisis on earth is because of the iniquity. When righteousness prevails, even nature aligns itself with the blessing. So we bring the rain on your land on schedule and bless the work you take in and any work you take in and just get blessed. It just get blessed. You do a thing like that, it just comes to the fore. It says you will learn to many nations. How many of us are already learning to nations? <laughs> I say that to laugh at all of us because we need to come out of where we are. You think you have the blessing? Because you have a little amount of money in your account. That's not a blessing. That's the toy. We need to come out of where we are. Until we begin to get to the place where we begin to lend to nations. So you will lend to many nations. You will lend to many nations. But you yourself won't have to take out the loan. You won't borrow. Oh, God has blessed me. I have three houses now. The three houses, I did not talk about that mortgage. That's the toy. Say so God will make you the head, not the tail. You always be the top dog. Can you imagine that? Never the underdog. As you obediently listen and to diligently keep the commandments of God, your God, that I'm commanding you today, don't swerve an inch to the right or left from the words which are, or what I command you today by going off, following, and worshiping other gods. You can see what the blessing does. This is just a preamble. This is just a, 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 a peek into what the effect of blessings. And when we talk about the blessing of Abraham, we can just see a little bit of this. And you will see this in the life of Abraham. That was a blessing personified. You will, you will see it. Because of time tonight, I'm going to stop here tonight. But just to help us understand a little bit about the blessing. This is what the blessing talks about. Being blessed in the city. Being blessed out of the city. Being blessed in the country. Your children being blessed. The your investment of all kinds, whether it's housing, properties, real estate, investment in stocks, investment in, in uh, businesses, investment, whatever you invest in, they just multiply and blossom. Your basket, your accounts, they are not empty. You know, you're going in, you're blessed, you're coming out, you're blessed. You know, your enemies, anybody who decides to be, be a pain in the neck for you, they're taken care of by God himself. You know, 
your burns are blessed. They just always feel with plenty. You know, blessings is in the land. People give you, you know, people, you know, uh, people will see you and they respect you. And all the people on earth can see the whole, the, the awesomeness of God over your life and they hold you in dignity, in all some respect they give to you. You know, everything you do prosper. God just gives you open heavens. And not just that, you start learning the nation. That's how wealthy you are. That when there's a crisis in any nation, you'll give them a loan contingent on this. You know, we can spread Christianity all over the world easily like that. People don't understand. People think it's by going to go and preach gospel somewhere that we can spread gospel. No, that's a foolish man's way of doing the gospel in today's generation. You think people are going to open the door for you when you go there? They won't. The ways to take over nations right now is not missionary by foot. Life has changed. Things have changed drastically. You go to a country like Lebanon that they're about to collapse. IMF won't borrow their money. No nation wants to borrow their money. And somebody comes in the area of business and he says, this is what we're going to do for you. We require how much? 10 billion. I will give you that 10 billion. Contingent on this. You're going to give me in every state or in every province of yours a land. And that land is going to be for religious activity. You don't even say it's for a Christian. You don't need to say that. And they will give it to you. They will sign everything off, whatever you say. Because nobody was going to borrow their money and they're in dire straight crisis. Venezuela right, right now, the same thing. Go meet them. Go meet whatever is the president. I said, well, I see that this is happening. I'm going to give you this. And when I give you this, this is what I want in return. I'm not asking you for, you know, what the IMF will give you that I start uh, implementing austerity crisis. That's not of, none of my business. I'm going to loan you this. Of course, you know, in your heart, you may never get the money back, but it's okay because you have more than more than what, you know, because I'm going to loan you this. It's going to be interest-free for two years, you know, and then after two years, you start paying interest. After five years, you start paying the money. They will gladly take you and say, well, this is what I want. In every city, I need this and this and this and this and this and this. You start building what you call multicultural centers with the back of your mind that this is for Christians. Where Christians could not gather before you start allowing them. And if they want to take any action, you will threaten them, you are withdrawing your loan. Your loan will be due right now. They will backtrack immediately. He said, true prosperity, the gospel shall be spread ab ab abroad. True prosperity. It is not ignorance. You go there, you, are, you declare yourself, I'm a missionary, I want to come and preach in this country. They don't even allow you in. They shut you out. Hallelujah. May the Lord help us. We need to get to that place where we become a blessing. Great, great blessing. That you become so relevant. They hold you in all some respect. You can talk to kings. You can talk. If Abraham were to be alive today, he can go anywhere. John, uh, John G. Rockefeller, the richest man that ever lived. If he were to be alive today, he would enter easily into any nation without any trouble. Any trouble whatsoever. Enter easily. It would be talking with kings because his whole wealth is much more than the economy of most nations we ever produce, more than the budget of most nations. May the Lord help us. We are getting there. And very soon, they shall say, those who have turned the world upside down have come to us, you know, or they, they, they say they, they, they have come, to, uh, the gods have come to us in the likeness of men. And those who have turned the world upside down have come to us because we have to do this for the gospel. Hallelujah. God bless you greatly. I hope I've been able to stir your heart through the Holy Spirit tonight to believe God for this wealthy place and change our mentality about God lavishing us with good things. He wants to. He wants you to be able to afford 10 Lamborghinis if you want to. Not because you'll be able to buy 10 Lamborghinis and keep them at home. That's not your sense. You know better. But you should be able to afford it if you need to. You don't see your business driving around Lamborghini. They don't do that. <laughs> uh, what's the name of this guy? Uh, um, uh, what's the name of this Microsoft? My Bill Gates is not driving 10 Lamborghinis all over the place. They don't do that. They have more meaningful use for their money. Not that they cannot afford it. They can afford it. That's what we're talking about. You know, uh, Elon Musk is not driving Lamborghini all over the place. He's driving his Tesla, you know, and um, the, the Oracle of Omaha as well. Uh, what's his name? Um, the name of this rich man also. You know, these guys are really stinkily rich. They can afford to buy as many Lamborghinis as possible. They are not. 
Not because they don't want to, but there's a better use of their money. That's what we're talking about. We can get there and we're going to get there. In Jesus' name, amen. Time is really gone today. Let's go. Let's buy heads as we pray. We're going to pray uh, because we're still fasting. We're in the third phase of fasting. We're in the second day of the third phase of fasting today. And I want us to, uh, to quickly pray. Let's begin to thank God today for the Bible study. First and foremost, let's thank God for the words that we hear. You know, because the word is able to produce. You know, I want you to know that God's word is able to produce. There is a reason for the word of God. And God's word is able to produce. If you have been on my voice tonight and you heard the word and the message from God, it is to provoke us to faith, to believe what is in God's word. We can see already what's in God's word and our faith can produce. So I wanted to just say, Lord, thank you because you're taking me to my wealthy place. I want to bless you because you're taking me to my wealthy place. I want to thank you because it's a great time to be alive. It's really a great time to be alive. I want to thank you for the blessing that you're, you're preparing to, to shower upon my life. I just want to thank you. I bless you. I appreciate you. I give you the glory. I give you the praise. I give you the honor. I give you the adoration. Just bless him tonight. Worship him and adore him and give him all the thanksgiving. Say, Lord, thank you. For your name is great. For your name is good. For your mercy and dirty forever. Just thank him tonight. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Lord, we thank you because we are alive. You've kept us safe from the attacks of the enemy. And you've kept us in a good place, in a in a habitable disposition and in a place that we can receive the blessings from you. Lord, thank you. We bless you. We appreciate you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first prayer point is tonight that we should pray for our Father in the Lord. We should thank God for our Father in the Lord, for Pastor Enoch Adejari and, and, and thank God for his life. Thank God for what God is doing through him. Thank God for the covenant that he has over his life. You know, thank God for choosing him. Thank God for anointing him, making a blessing to his generation. You know, thank you for, for using him to expand the mission of RCCG. Let's begin to bless God for him. Thank God for making him a blessing in our generation. Thank you. Thank the Lord for using him to spread the gospel to over 180 countries around the globe. You know. That has been a blessing. So let's thank God for that man of God that is a blessing. Father, we just want to thank you for our Father in the Lord, Pastor He, the boy that you're using greatly, mightily, and using him for mighty exploits upon the earth. Thanks for using one man to spread your gospel to over 180 nations in the world. Lord, thank you. Lord, we bless you for the grace of yours over his life, for your anointing over his life. We want to bless you for good, your, for your great, for your good, for your mercy and dirty forever. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. We bless you. We appreciate you. We love you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your greatness. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your mightiness. Thank you for your awesomeness. Thank you because you are so good. You're so good. You use the man of God tremendously. You use him for the work of the gospel and for furthering your work on earth. Lord, we thank you because even we are beneficiaries of his ministry as well. We can testify to the goodness of yours in his life. Father, we just say thank you. Lord, we say thank you for that man of God. Thank you for the shepherd that you have put over our own church. We don't take things for granted. We appreciate you for your good, for your God, for your mercy and daughter forever. Thank you for our man of God. We thank you. We bless you. We even thank you for his wife. Who has been a support in the ministry for him lord we thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you for being a for being for her being a support for that ministry we appreciate you we appreciate you we appreciate you we appreciate you we thank 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 you lord we bless you we appreciate you blessed be your name lord hallelujah hallelujah glory be to your holy name god Hallelujah. Second prayer so, point that we're going to pray tonight, apart from thanking God, is that we are going to pray that God will allow his son to fulfill his ministry. That's Pastor Dibuya right now and his wife, that they will fulfill their ministry, they will finish well and strong in the name of Jesus. The work that God has committed to them, they will do it greatly and they will continue. God will continue to strengthen and empower them ahead of the task in the name of Jesus. That none of their words shall fall to the ground in the name of Jesus. And they will be moving from glory to glory by the year in the name of Jesus. They will never have a better yesterday in their lives in the name of Jesus. And God, the anointing will never run dry. 
you know, and they also will pray for their family that they will not bury any of their children, whether they be biological children or spiritual children, in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray for them. Father God Almighty, we pray for a man of God, the man that you set over a horse in the name of Jesus, Pastor Deboe. We pray, God, that your mighty hands will be over his life. Your mighty hand will be over his ministry. He will finish strong. You will continue to strengthen him and empower him for the work that you've called him unto. You will look after his affairs. You look after his family. Lord, he will not have to bury any member of his family, any member of his, uh, any, any children of his, whether they be biological children or spiritual children in the name of Jesus. Lord, he will not walk on this. His anointing will not run dry. Your, your blessing over his life will continue to be in full manifestation. The devil shall not frustrate or derail your plan over his life in the name of Jesus. You will continue to walk mightily through him. You will move from one level of glory unto another in the name of Jesus. And Lord, you will back every word that comes out of his mouth, that none of his words shall fall to the ground in the name of Jesus. You will continue to strengthen him. You will continue to empower him. You will continue to give him all the strength that he requires. Lord, you will give him long life. You will give him peace. You will give him prosperity in the name of Jesus. You will continue to be his provider. There will be divine protection around about him, and you'll continue to provide for all of his needs in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you tonight. We'll bless you for your good God. Glory be to your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. And lastly, I want us to quickly also pray for ourselves tonight, that in the name of Jesus, that we will also not lack any good thing, particularly in this period where we're fasting and praying, that our lives will begin to manifest the blessing that the Lord shall take us to a wealthy place. That all these words that we're talking about and we're learning from, our lives will begin to fulfill it in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Because the Bible says that the husband man shall be the first partaker of the fruit. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you help us to be the first partaker of the fruit indeed. That Lord, this wealthy place that we're talking about, you will take us into it. The Lord will not be lacking in any facet, in any capacity. In the name of Jesus. So you would take us into our wealthy place, Lord. Lord, you would take us into our wealthy place, Lord. You will take us into our wealthy place, Lord. Father, we give you the glory. We give you the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Now we're going to share. We're going to take our confession together. Wherever you are, you can unmute your microphone as we take the confession together. Tonight, in Jesus' name, this is our divine immunization. Let's take it together. I dwell Let's in the go. sacred place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I see of the Lord. is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I trust. Surely, He has delivered me from the snare of the Father, of the innocent pestilence. He has covered me with His feathers. And under His wings do I trust. His truth is my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because I've made the Lord my refuge, even the most time I have been there's no evil for me. Then I shall never come near my dwelling. For he has given me the strength to keep me in all my ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's take our yeah. first one confession together. This is a year of divine healing, divine, divine health, health divine, divine restoration, divine, divine prosperity, divine, divine protection, and abundance of love. Yeah, 2020, I shall rise on the earth, and I shall spend my days in prosperity, and my years in prosperity. I shall financial, spiritual No evil shall be for me, and I shall end it well, they they shall attend to me. No one shall attend to me. Behold, you call a nation a nation that I know as a nation because of the Lord my God. God. And for the fullness of the Lord, he has glorified me in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Let's share the grace Amen. of our fellowship. Now, with the grace of our Lord, 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 Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the God, of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Lord, rest in the bad with us now. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of our lives. All the days of our lives. Of our lives. Well, we shall dwell in, 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 in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Have a great night and enter into your wealthy place very soon. In Jesus' name, amen.